Hi guys, it's Mars. Welcome to week 102 of the Journal on Monday series. I'm taking out some printed paper out of my vintage vanity <laughs> pin of our art journal. Wow, that's quite a mouthful. And I'm resizing some of the printed paper so that I can use it as background paper. Then placing them side to side and gluing them together using a piece of masking tape. So this is my very first video as brand ambassador for Finovar's products and I have to say that it was very very hard to get this video done because each and every one of these products is so much fun to play with that I had a very hard time uh, containing myself to, well, making my spread instead of playing around and uh, enjoying all these products. I'm starting with the um, white heavy gesso. So this is one of the art basics and I'm simply toning down the background from the paper applying a very very thin layer of this um, white gesso. Then using the soft matte gel and a makeup sponge I'm applying it over a stencil so that I can use it as a glue for the next step. which is to apply some glitter. And this is one of the art ingredients glitter sets. Um, it's the ebony and ivory one. And I'm using the soft matte gel to glue it on the paper. So I did work quite fast to avoid having the glue uh, drying before I could apply the glitter. And I'm putting the excess back in the jar. So just like you would do with embossing powder. Now, this is not embossing powder. So once my glue is dried, my soft matte gel, I took the excess off and look at this. Doesn't that look like a, a hologram? I really love the fact that I can have some glitter without having it all over in your face on my spread. Now, using the soft matte gel to glue down some pieces um, of rusted paper, I have the recipe to create your own rusted paper on my blog. You can find it under, under the free tutorials. And once I have all the rusted paper on the paper that I want, I'm adding some more uh, cambric, which is a kind of fabric. And again, using the soft metal to glue it down. I'm doing my best to have some of the fibers sticking out so that I don't have a need and clean surface to work on, but more something that's distressed and uh, vintage looking. Cutting off all the excess. And then I apply a layer of clear gesso again from the Art Basics all over um, the spread. It's a very thin layer, just something to have um, on top of everything and protect everything and allowing me to add a next layer. These are primary elements and as I have two empty bottles I can finally mix these up in water so I'm scooping some of the powder inside the bottles and then run over to the kitchen to add some water to it. Once it's all mixed together, I can use them to spray on my paper. I'm using this piece of kitchen roll as stencil to protect the rest of my paper. And on top of this, I'm applying a real stencil. This is the Bubbles by Finnevar. And now applying a thin layer of graphite texture paste. And I have to say that with every jar that I open from Finnevar's line, I think that this is my next favorite product. And every time I open this one, I start drooling. <laughs> this is just how uh, yummy this product is. So I'm applying a very, very thin layer. It seems like I'm going a lot in the jar, but I'm really just applying a thin, thin layer and scraping it um, to keep it as flat as possible. And just look at that. 
I'm leaving it aside to dry and preparing another little piece of paper that I will need, just colorizing this watercolor paper with some acoline that I diluted in water, and then using a circle template. I'm drawing my circle and then cutting it out. Once that's done, I'm adding some more Distress Ink on the edges. And to hide the fact that my circle is not a perfect circle, I'm distressing the edges using this Prima distressing tool. These are uh, photos that I've been selling on my Etsy shop and they're printed on printer film which is translucent or transparent in this case and then attaching it to my paper I can easily follow my base circle um, to cut to cut the film strip out in a neat circle as well. My background is almost dry but not quite so I keep on going and preparing stuff that I want to add to my spread. This is a leftover of plaster strip that already has a bit of color on it. It's just some color eggs that I used to give it a bit of a vintage look. But I thought it was too soft compared to the background, so I'm adding some more uh, primary elements that I just diluted in water and some more um, color eggs. Again, leaving it aside to dry and then starting to prepare this piece of chipboard just by applying a thin layer of heavy black gesso. This black gesso has an absolutely gorgeous matte finish to it when it dries. And you might think that I'm not objective, but if I didn't have anything nice to say, I wouldn't say anything at all. So if I'm saying it, it's because I mean it. Going in with some sanding paper to bring the chipboard back to the surface and then applying some Vintage Photo Distress Ink. At this point it looks funny because I'm only colorizing um, the part that I will need or the part that will be visible. Because for once I know what I want to um, apply as embellishment. Now Finnevar tells us in her soft matte, in, um, no, in her soft gel video that you can use a soft gel as a glue, as a precision glue. So as I have this little bottle, I want to test it. So I'm scooping up some of the soft gel and putting it in this um, bottle that has a precision tip. So let's try it out. So far so good. And when you blew it down, it works. Voila! So as I said, I have um, a very good idea of the embellishment that I want to use. So I'm getting those ready, adding some Distress Ink. And instead of blending my Distress Ink with water, I'm blending it with diluted acoline. And this is a gray one. If you would like all the details about the colors that I'm using, you can find a complete list of ingredients for each and every journal on Monday video on my blog. I have a whole page on my blog um, with the link for every journal on Monday blog post. So these are the embellishments that I chose. This is construction waste. We just finished building our carport. And my husband had a lot of that over and you will see a lot of that in my future projects because I love that bubble hold um, metal strip that I rusted, of course. I gave it a home rust uh, treatment. So this is how I want to have my embellishments. So now I can start gluing them together. All parts of that are paper or pore surfaces, I'm gluing down using um, the soft gel. And this is the matte version, but you can do the exact same thing with the gloss version. And everything that's heavier will be glued down using uh, the 3D gloss gel. And again, you could do that with the 3D matte gel, of course. Uh, 
I'm also using these 3D um, glue dots from Dots because I have that chipboard that's quite textured and the metal that's quite textured and to make sure that everything has the same level on my spread and that everything stays flat, I'm combining um, the 3D gel with um, the glue dots. So everything you're seeing me pick up with my finger is the 3D gel. Placing a clip to help the glue uh, while it sticks. And it goes pretty fast, so I can already take it away and start adhering the rest on top of it. Again, as my photo will be partly over a piece of metal and over the plaster strip, I'm leveling it using the 3D glue dots. As I will have to cut a piece of my circle, I have to place some more um, staples in my photo to make sure that it stays in place on top of the paper circle. And I did cut one of the staples, of course. <laughs> so I had to put a, a new one in there. Going back in with some more 3D gel, and this time in my gel, I'm gluing, I'm gluing glass beads. I have to admit that I had several jars in the Finovar line where I thought this is so not me, I will never be able to use that product in my projects. And when I start playing with it, I realize, oh, this might become my next favorite one. <laughs> and you will see with these glass beads that when I was done, or I thought I was done, later on in the video, I went back in with the glass beads because I thought there weren't enough of those and it's fun to try to control how you glue them on the paper. I'm a bit of a control freak, but you cannot control exactly where the beads will end up. Um, you have some control over it, but it's not an exact sign, so you have to go with the flow. And I really like that part about um, these beads and just how they look when, when they're dried. While my glass beads are drying, I'm going back in with the stress ink and adding a bit of an edge all around my spread and helping to underline the vintage tone of it and then adding some stamping. This is my French journal page by Stampatique that I remounted on a foam, stamping foam, to, so that I can handle it easier instead of the big uh, wooden block. I'm stamping with this stress ink and I do have some gesso underneath, remember, so that I can tone that stamping down quite a lot. First with a dry cloth, then using a baby wipe and when you look at um, through the camera it's like there's nothing left anymore, but there is some stamping left. And 
and using uh, using um, a seven dot studio alphabet sticker to add my wording. going around it with charcoal pencil and then blending it using a blending stump. And this is where I realized that I would have to add some glue on top of everything to make sure that my word would stay in place. But first, I'm spraying some more color on the paper, very lightly, using the sprays that I mixed um, earlier on. Now, to separate my paper, the masking tape that I used on the back was... I didn't um, dare to separate it by taking the paper away, the masking tape away, because I thought my paper would get ripped. So I decided to cut it and leave the masking tape on the back. And then adding some black soot distress ink, which will help the eye stay on the paper. Yes, I was playing with my hologram. <laughs> with my hologram um, clear gesso uh, glitter. <laughs> so again, a thin layer of soft gel over my word to make sure that it would stay on the paper. That's what I meant when I said that I went back in with some more glass beads, because let's face it, there's no such thing as too much glass beads on a paper. and then adding my date stamp. So when I came back in next morning and glued it in my journal, I wanted to add the word imagine. And I did so using a pen and then with charcoal pencil, I added some shading to it. I also wanted to add some more splatters to it. Now, I don't know why my camera at this point thought everything should be orange. Sorry about that. So I used some um, airbrush color from Golden, diluted with some water. And then using a paintbrush, I just added some splatters. Now, I also wanted to have uh, splatters in a brownish color after I was done shading. and adding more black splatters. <laughs> so I did that using a water diluted color X. And then to remind the color of the background, I also added some splatters using the primary elements from the beginning of the video. That's it for today. If you liked today's video, don't forget to hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Thank you very much for being out there and see you back next time. Ta-da!